Welcome everyone. What we're going to be doing today is talking about the concept of isotopes. You see, isotopes are atoms of the same element, but they differ in their number of neutrons. Since neutrons are part of how you calculate the uh, atomic mass, their atomic masses for uh, isotopes, they will be different. Now, chemically speaking, and I'll put this over here, chemically, isotopes would be identical. And the reason they're identical is because an isotope does not alter the electrons. And if you recall, it is the valence electrons that are responsible for chemical properties. The only thing that changes in an isotope is the number of neutrons. Okay, so that is why, chemically speaking, uh, isotopes uh, retain their chemical properties. Now, I will say this, that uh, <clears throat> although, you know, we have the, the masses are different because the, the neutrons are different, the isotopes, <clears throat> most of them happen to be radioactive. Not all of them are radioactive, but the majority of them are. We're going to take a look at some examples. Um, you probably have heard of carbon-12. <clears throat> this is probably the most common isotope <clears throat> of carbon. It's the one found in the periodic table. And then you may have heard of carbon-14, which is an isotope of carbon that's used for uh, dating fossils. Okay, this one happens to be radioactive. Uh, but again, not all of them are radioactive, but <clears throat> most of them are. This um, notation that I just wrote is known as isotope notation, and the number behind the dash represents the mass <clears throat> number for the uh, isotope. Okay, now let's take a look at another example. Let's look at hydrogen here. And you'll notice there, hydrogen has three isotopes. One is called hydrogen-1. It has a mass number of one. Uh, it's also known as protium, uh, as a, as common uh, in common language. Then you have hydrogen-2, which is known as deuterium, also known as heavy hydrogen. It weighs twice as much as hydrogen-1. And then you got a very rare form of hydrogen known as tritium, also known as radioactive hydrogen. And when you look at all the hydrogens, the fact that it's hydrogen means that the atomic number will be the same. Notice they each have one proton. <clears throat> Remember that if you change the number of protons, you actually change the element. <clears throat> so isotopes are atoms of the same element, meaning that they're all going to have the same number of protons. Now here's the other thing, <clears throat> isotopes in the notation that I just showed you here with hydrogen 1, 2, and 3, that's a neutral notation, which means that if you have one proton, you're also going to have one electron, so you'll see how the proton and the, ele and the electron number <clears throat> is the same for hydrogen 1, 2, and 3. But here's what changes, look at the neutrons. In hydrogen 1, <clears throat> notice there's zero neutrons. Uh, the formula to find the neutrons, I don't know if you remember this, but to find the neutrons, one of the things that you can do is you get the mass number, okay, which is the number after the dash, minus the atomic number, which you could either get it from the periodic table. However, if you look here, we have that number written. It's the number of protons. So in hydrogen 1, the mass number is 1. The atomic number is 1. That's why you get 0 neutrons. It's the only element that has no <clears throat> neutrons at all. Then you got hydrogen 2. So you get the mass number minus the atomic number. And that's why you only have one neutron. Notice the neutrons are different. <clears throat> you could also see it in the picture. No neutrons there. Look at the nucleus, which is where the neutron would be found. It's represented here by the blue. And then you got <clears throat> hydrogen 3, which would be the mass number minus the atom, atomic number. And it has two neutrons. And you can see the two blue ones uh, right there. <clears throat> so notice how isotopes are atoms of the same element. They're all hydrogens. But what they do is they differ in their number of neutrons. Now, <clears throat> the mass number, uh, which is abbreviated uh, or represented by the unit uh, AMU, atomic mass unit, uh, is defined based on using carbon-12 as, as an arbitrary standard. 
And AMU is defined as being one-twelfth of the mass of carbon-12 atom. Some textbooks <clears throat> abbreviate an AMU with the um, symbol just U by itself. So you might see some textbooks as AMU or just a U by itself. <clears throat> now, that means that carbon-12 <clears throat> has a mass equal to 12 AMU. So if you look at the definition, an AMU is one twelfth of the mass of carbon twelve. So one twelfth of twelve, the word of can be represented by a multiplication. <clears throat> if you do the math here, one twelfth of twelve is one. And that's how we get the definition of an atomic mass unit. It is based as on using carbon twelve as an arbitrary standard. Now, what we're going to do is, <clears throat> here's a calculation. We're going to learn how to calculate the average atomic mass, <clears throat> which is what appears on the periodic table. You'll notice that it is a decimal. The reason it's a decimal, it's because it's an average of all the isotopes that exist for that particular element. And that's why <clears throat> the number comes out as a decimal. Usually, that's what happens when you obtain an average. It is based on two factors. There is an instrument called a mass spectrometer, which <clears throat> provides us with the data that we can use to calculate the average atomic mass. And the two pieces of information that you need would be the mass of each isotope present for a particular atom and what we call <clears throat> the percent abundance or fractional abundance, which is the percentage of that isotope found in nature. So a mass spectrometer gives you the number of isotopes, <clears throat> the masses of each isotope, as well as the percentage of each of those isotopes found in nature. <clears throat> now the, the formula, once you have all the data <clears throat> to find the average atomic mass, would be the following. Once you know the mass of each isotope and the percent abundance or fractional abundance, you would multiply the mass of, let's say, isotope number one with its percentage. And then you would add it to the mass of the second isotope <clears throat> times its percentage. If the isotope has a third, or if the atom has a third isotope, you would do this again. You would get the mass of the third isotope times the fractional abundance of the third isotope. Most <clears throat> atoms, uh, the most common thing is that they'll have two or three isotopes. That's usually the most common. There are some atoms that have um, <clears throat> four and possibly five isotopes, but the majority have either two <clears throat> or three. What we're going to do is we're going to now put this formula into practice and we're going to learn how to find the average atomic mass uh, <clears throat> with the data given to us. So here's a sample. <clears throat> Chlorine has two isotopes. One is called chlorine-35. The actual mass is 34.964 atomic mass units. And it exists as 75.53% of the time. That would be its percent or fractional abundance. The other isotope of chlorine is called chlorine-37. Its mass is 36.966 AMU. And its percent or fractional abundance is 24.47%. When you add up the two percents, since there's only two isotopes, they should add up to 100. Now, here's what we do to calculate the average atomic mass. What you do is you get the mass of chlorine 35. Since the actual mass is given, we're going to use the actual decimal. <clears throat> if not, we would have just used 35. But we actually have the number in the data, the actual number. Now, <clears throat> we also have the mass of the chlorine 37. So those are the masses of <clears throat> each of the isotopes. This is isotope number one. This is isotope number two. Now pay close attention to the percentages. Notice <clears throat> how the percentages have to be converted from a percent to a decimal. The way you do that is you divide by a hundred. So you got to get the percent. When you divide that by a hundred, for instance, 75.53% divided by 100 gives you 0.7553. It is important that you don't forget to change the percent to a regular number. 
The other example is 24.47% is the percentage of the second isotope. Again, notice you divide that by 100 and you get your percentages as a decimal. Once you do that <clears throat> and you input everything into the formula, the calculation's pretty easy. So you're going to first multiply the mass of the first isotope, which is 34.969 times the percent abundance, which is 0.7553. Then you're going to multiply <clears throat> the second mass of the other isotope, which is 36.966 times its fractional abundance, which is 0.2447. First we multiply and then we're going to add those two numbers. And the reason they round it to four significant figures is because the percentages have four significant figures. And the number obtained is 35.45. This is actually the number on the periodic table. This is how chemists um, actually calculate what you see on the periodic table. Now notice, <clears throat> notice that there's two isotopes, chlorine 35 and 37. One thing I would like you to check, and you can see this all the time, is that the average will always be closest to who is the most common isotope of that particular element in nature. 35.45 is much closer to 35 than it is to 37. And the reason it's closer to 35 <clears throat> is because chlorine 35 is the most common isotope. It exists at 75.53% of the time. So you will always notice that pattern. Once you obtain your average, notice that the average will be closest to who is the most common isotope for that particular atom. <clears throat> now, here's a second example. We have here gallium. It also has two isotopes. So gallium-69 is the first one, and they give us the actual mass, which would be 68 point nine two five six let me put the decimal point here so that's the mass of the first isotope you're gonna notice that the percentage needs to be changed so when you change that to a decimal it'll be point six zero one one and then you're gonna add it to the mass of the second isotope which is gallium seventy one they actually give you <clears throat> the uh, mass since the actual masses are given you want to use the the actual masses if the 70.9247 wasn't there, you would round that to 71. As you can see, this one rounds to 69, this one rounds to 71, but we want to use the actual data given. And of course, don't forget to change the percentage to a number. <clears throat> so divide by 100 and you get 0.3989, <clears throat> okay? And then you're going to multiply these two numbers, and then you're going to multiply these two numbers and add them. <clears throat> now, on this next page, I have here the solution. This one's worked out for us. So notice here how they converted the percentages into a decimal. They divided each one by 100. And <clears throat> here is the formula down here, the atomic mass. So they put the percentage first. That really doesn't matter. There's the mass of the first isotope. There's the percentage. And when they multiplied those two numbers, they got 41.4312. Then the second isotope, here's the mass, here's the percentage. Then they multiplied those two numbers and they got 28.2919. And then finally, the numbers were added. And then they rounded to four because the question had four significant figures. And they got 69.72. Now... This one is actually closer to, um, if you look at it, it's closer to 69. Um, and if you look at the percentages, notice that 60% is isotope of gallium-69 versus 71, which is uh, about 40%. It's closer to the gallium-69 isotope, okay? So you'll see that the average will always be, again, closest to the most common isotope, which in this case is gallium-69. <clears throat> now let's try one more problem here as a practice. <clears throat> so this one is about magnesium. It has three naturally occurring isotopes. 
So they give you the masses of each. 23.99 is the first one. 24.99 is the second one. And 25.98 is the third isotope in atomic mass units. They also give you the percentages. Notice these percentages will add up to, um, <clears throat> to 100%. Again, you need to remember that these need to be changed. This is very important. Notice you got to divide each by 100, which basically means just move the decimal point two spaces to the left. So change these from a percent to a decimal. <clears throat> now I'm going to pause here for a minute. I want you to try this problem on and then we'll go over it. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so I'm assuming that you plugged it into our equation. So <clears throat> I did this as well. So to find the average atomic mass, okay, first, here's the information for the first isotope. There's the mass, there's the percentage. The mass of the, uh, I'm sorry, the data for the second isotope, here's the mass, there's the percentage. I already changed it to a decimal. And here's the data for the third isotope, there's the mass, and there is the percentage changed to a normal decimal. Then I multiply <clears throat> these two and I got 18.949701. I multiplied these two and I got uh, 2.499. And then I multiplied these two and I got 2.860398. Once <clears throat> you do your correct order of operations, then you add these numbers up. And without any rounding, you get 24.309099. And then I'm going to go ahead, every number in our problem had four significant figures. So I rounded this to four. And I got, if you notice here, 24.31 AMUs. Remember that some books just use U. And this is the average atomic mass. This is the same one found um, on your periodic table. And if you look carefully... The number 24.31 is closest because there are three isotopes here, okay? Uh, this one here would be magnesium. I'll write, I'll write it down here, 24 if we round. This one would be magnesium 25. And this one over here would be magnesium 26. So those are your three isotopes if we round them. And clearly... 24.31 is closest to magnesium 24, okay? And magnesium 24 exists about 79% of the time. So we're confirming here that our average is closest to the most common isotope, which would be magnesium 24, okay? So I hope that, uh, you know, you set up your problem correctly. Do follow the correct order of operations, okay? And you'll notice that you will have a decimal because you are obtaining an average of all the isotopes for that particular element.